so in this workflow video, I really want to talk about detection, audio and MIDI detection. Um, MIDI detection has always been at the core of Scalar, and now we've advanced not only the um, functionality of the MIDI detection, but we've introduced audio detection. So there's, there's several different ways we can detect things. So um, let's have a look. Here I've got an Ableton Live session, and I'm going to open up just the regular Scalar 2. So there is now a Scalar 2 and a Scalar Audio. There's also a Scalar MIDI effects or a Scalar Control if you're using Logic. But this is to ensure that we've got maximum compatibility across all doors. Okay, uh, there's a Scalar. You can see here I've got an audio file and a MIDI file. So let's start with MIDI. Now the very first thing we can do is if we've got a MIDI file, we can just drag and drop it straight on. Scalar will always ask us if we're happy to replace the current detection. And that might be relevant if you've already got some material or some chords in there. Um, so, yep, correctly. Um, that's my chords. So often I get asked, what's the easiest way for me to import some chords that I've made in Scalar? So even before you open Scalar, let's say I'm, you know, I've made my own chords here. How can I bring them into Scalar and start using some of Scalar's functions or features? Several ways you can do it. I think the easiest thing for me is just literally copy those chords across, um, pull up a Scalar, a Scalar 2, let's say for example here, um, and then you've got those chords sitting on the Scalar channel. Well, very simple thing to do is hit detect, um, press record, and then hit play. And there they are, the, the exact same chords. I'm going to drag them down here because now I can start to use the, um, the functionality of Scalar. Exactly the same chords, um, voiced exactly the same way. And now that they're in Scalar, I can do all kinds of things, can't I really? Because they're, they're, they've come into Scalar, it's read the chords, um, I can save those chord sets. It's also told me, um, most importantly, that I'm in the B flat minor key and detected it correctly. It's told me that the other um, scales that I could be in. So I could decide, okay, well, actually, let's play, let's, let's go with D major scale or A flat mixolydian. Um, these are the ones that it's, it's correctly said, or well, seven out of seven. So it could be in, in a variety of modes of Phrygian, Locrian, Dorian, um, but, you know, it sounds like B flat minor. That sounds like the root key, that B flat. Um, so that's really a cool and easy way to get going. Um, you can then come into the edit mode and I can start playing around with the, um, with the functions in the edit mode. So for example, I could say, okay, well, that's, the, that's my chord progression. I'll put the second chord, I'll invert the second chord. I'll put the third chord down an octave, but bring it up an inversion. Um, I will uh, turn on expression for the first chord and I'll turn on arpeggio for the um, third chord. Um, yeah, and you're away. Once you've got the chords, you've actually got the original voices. You can turn voice grouping on. You can, you know, replace. Let's go back into edit mode and let me just clear all the, um, the changes I made there. Uh, and this will just help me basically get back to playing it as per normal. Great. Um, and you know, I've got all the options here, don't I? I could say, well, D major, I'd like to substitute. Uh, you could try different voicings. I could go to voicing five and say, okay, um, yeah, I prefer the D major to be like this. So once you've got your chords in a scalar, scalar can help you revoice really nicely. Just to recall, we can drag and drop our MIDI files or we can read straight from. And of course, we don't have to do any of those. We can just play some notes. Um, okay, so it's correctly picked the actual single notes and the chords. What I can actually do is, if, if, if there's ever anything in the way or I've played anything incorrectly, I can actually just remove the notes. Um, and you can also remove chords too. So, okay, there was two G7s detected there. I could 
I could remove them. And then I've got exactly what, what I was playing. So that's the way MIDI works. You can drag and drop, you can read off your channel, or you can just actually just play notes um, and chords. Okay, I want to look at audio detection because that one probably needs a little bit more explanation. Now, there's a few different ways we can do this. Okay, so uh, I'm going to bring back a scalar, just a normal scalar instrument on a scalar MIDI channel, but I'm also going to open up scalar audio on an audio channel. Okay, um, and what I'm going to do is here, scalar audio um, is open. Now, it's not going to play anything internally. I would need to arm the channel if I want to hear. And the point is, is that we don't want to import an audio file and have scalar playing at the same time. Um, when we're importing audio, the easiest way is simply to just drag and drop an audio file. Okay. If I drag and drop, it's going to say it's going to replace your current detection. Do always recall that, that because you may be messing around with something, let's say in this instance here, um, and have a bunch of stuff going, and then you go, oh yeah, cool, what is this audio file? You bring it in, it's going to replace your current detection. I think that's really important to recall. Um, and that's, your, that's really your audio files. Um, and you can hear it's, you know, pretty much spot on. Um, and then from there, you're away. You can start bringing it in and doing it, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, so there are a few other ways to do this. Let's bring that audio file in. Um, okay, so that's the audio file. You can see that there. So you can drag and drop, but I kind of like having the control of, of doing it live. Now, there's a few ways we can detect an audio file within our doors. Um, the easiest way is to, just to bring in scalar audio onto an audio channel. Now, the thing to bear in mind here is the threshold level. It's pretty small. You can see that little dot there. But it's, when you're doing it live, it's important to be able to adjust that threshold to get best results. Now, audio files can be really tricky to play with, obviously. And I'll show you a more complex example in a second. These are some straight chords. That looks like a good enough place. If I'm getting the detection right, it should work. Here we go. Sounds like four chords. So if I arm the channel, now I can... Yeah, so... So that's another way to do it. Now, let's just um, assume that we don't, aren't going to use scalar audio. Um, so there's the audio file on its own on its own channel. I'm now going to just open up, just to, just to avoid any confusion, a scalar, just a regular scalar instrument. Okay, so there it is. There's my regular scalar instrument. Um, what I'm going to do now is input. I'm going to tell it to read whatever audio file or whatever channel I've got going. So it could be reading a live input or you've got that audio channel there. Um, again, straightforward, put it in and you can see that uh, if I uh, have to change the source, sorry, that's the important thing. Don't forget, change the source into audio. If I hit uh, change the source to audio, straight away, it's detecting from a different input. So you've got a variety of ways to detect audio. You can drag and drop. You can put a scalar audio onto an audio channel, and it'll leave it. It'll read it live. Or you can open scalar instrument onto an instrument channel and use the input or the side chain input. Works in all doors and it's really, really fantastic. I'm going to have a look at a more complex way of reading audio and how you might use it in a more realistic or common way. Okay, so I've been given this track here to um, sweeten, as we would say. So basically one of our composers here at Samplify um, uh, has written a track and we want to use it for a video game and I would like to add a few things. Um, or it should just be the mashup that you're doing or a remix you're doing or whatever. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not very good musically. Some of the other guys here can easily, quickly, that perfect pitch, can pick it up, listen to it and tell you what key and chords are playing. I wouldn't have a clue. Um, traditionally, I would get on an old keyboard, play around, try and find the root note. Is that the root note? Okay, 
um, goodness gracious me, what's the intervals for minor, what are the intervals for major? Okay, I figured it out what scale it is. Now, how, how on earth do I get the chords? Um, so, scalar can help here. Now, if the nature of the beast with audio detection is it's never perfect, and there's so many contingencies like what you're feeding it. Here, well, I'm barely feeding it chords, I'm feeding it a bass line, a lead, drums. It's going to be really difficult for me to work anything out. So what I'm going to do um, is uh, I'm going to open up a scalar audio um, and I'm going to open it up on the audio track. Okay, uh, I'm going to check the threshold. Yeah, looks good. Um, so let's hope for the best. Let's see what detection we get. If anything, I'm going to hit record. Okay, cool. So it's it's told me that I'm in the D minor scale. So yeah, it's it's working really well. Um, so if if for example a chord came up, let's say I'm detecting um, uh, another track that, that might have you know various chords around, and it comes up with a grey box to say, well, I found this chord, but it's not in the scale. Remember, you can always right click and remove to try and make things more accurate. Okay, remove. Now the point of me trying to find out what chords these are is not for me specifically here to pull down and start doing stuff, but it's just to find out what key and scale it is. D minor. So um, uh, I can um, arm this channel now because it's scalar audio just to hear. Yep, that sounds kind of like the right thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across and I'm going to open up uh, Scalar 2. Um, okay, so I'm now going to come into Scales. D minor is what you told me it was. So I'm going to choose D minor. Let's uh, pull up a super saw. I think that would be probably the right type of sound. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, you're going to um, bind that, and um, I'm going to voice, going to voice group it um, to keep all the voicing together. And I'm going to try and find the chord. So, yep, that first one's obviously right. Yep. Okay. Cool, so by experimenting around, uh, let's assume I know no music theory of Tommy. They're the keys, they're the chords that belong to that scale. So now that I'm, now I'm in D minor, it's just really about finding which one goes with which chord in the original track. So I've worked that out. Okay, wrong one there. One. Three, four, and six. Yeah, I'm going to record that. Okay, great. Um, that sounds like my chords. Let's hear just scalar. Yeah, that's great. So I've actually figured out, I'll just quantize that, I've actually figured out the chords of the original tune. Great, so now I can just, I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to bring uh, these chords down. Uh, they're my trigger notes, so I've duplicated Scalar, which makes it really nice and easy. I'm going to force the legato. I'm going to open up the new Scalar that I just duplicated. Um, and rather than playing the same super saw, I might go, let's go a square saw, and I might um, turn on, let's go the arpeggio, let's go up and, up and down, repeat, and let's go sixteenths. Yeah, great. So, so just by detecting, that's what I found works. 
Yep, great. Okay, cool. So if I move this stuff over here, shall I, um, to the kind of that first part of the track that I was trying to build over. Yeah, okay, so once I know those chords, once I know those chords, it's really very easy to drag and drop. Um, uh, let's say if I open my, you know, that instance of Scalar there, I could go, okay, it was one, uh, uh, three, four, and six. And you know, I can, they're my chords, I can drag and drop them anywhere. Um, uh, it can also MIDI capture, but now it enables me to just pull up things like uh, Arcade, okay? And say, okay, Arcade, I want something in D minor. So straight away, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, pretty much able to get an entire... So that's just what I've created from the detection. So I hope you've enjoyed the workflow. Again, just really easy way to get Scalar to be able to either detect what you're doing in terms of what you're playing or the chords that you make within your door um, or drag in an audio file from another tune that you want to start working on or remixing and so forth. It, Scalar is really flexible. There's Scalar control to use as a MIDI effect within Logic, there's Scalar instrument you can use within any door or this Scalar audio. Hope you've enjoyed the workflow detection video.